Hello, Caroline. Hello, how are you? I'm good, and you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, it's about lunchtime here, so I've just had some food. Made an absolutely glorious pineapple smoothie, so oh. I'm feeling full of goodness and nutrition today, which is great. That's but great. the weather's really cold here. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. It's so nice to have you here. I'm so happy for today, actually. I was oh, so exciting. to be here yeah it is thank you so much for inviting me i'm so happy to be here participating with you it's a wonderful experience for us to share this moment so thank you you're welcome you're welcome yeah so today we're gonna talk about um the holiday season that uh, is here and uh, we will be able to uh just to tell people to enjoy and to love each other because we know that the past couple of years it wasn't easy so it will be uh, the first year that actually that people can get together and heal and everything. So, but before we go to that, I would like you to present yourself. Uh, so yeah, for well, my, my name is, yeah, my name is Caroline. I'm in the UK in the Kingdom of Britain. Um, it's pretty cold here. Um, but I have been, I've lived in Britain all my life. Um, I've done many things over the years. Um, spiritually, I write um, books on positive power affirmations, um, which have been shared all over the world, used in hospitals for healing. Um, in a practical sense, I also have a part-time job working in a shop. Um, I'm here really just to help people, to empower people. I'm here for peace and unity and to spread the love and joy to everybody. That's really what I feel my mission is on this planet at this time. So it's just great to be here. Thank you for having me. And yeah, we'll have a great chat and hopefully inspire you to feel some love and joy as we go through this festive season. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. So yeah, so it was a little bit difficult for the past two years, uh, this will be the first year that people will get together, but I know it's not going to be easy because it's going to feel like awkward because some people, um, uh, you know, they have a problem with those who did this and do, and the one di who didn't do it. But I think we have just to uh, accept it the way it is, uh, the choice of everybody and just to move on and just leave the the moment because the festivity is the time of love joy sharing and uh, everything so what's your thought about it yeah i agree really first of all it has been a difficult time for people um i haven't seen my family for a few years not all in one place in the same room together that we used to do every year at christmas and that just simply hasn't happened and people have been afraid. They've been afraid to go out of their homes. They've been afraid to go out in the streets. They've been afraid to get their lives back socially, interacting and doing the fun things that they normally would have done. So as we venture out this year, it's important to remember remember that everyone did make their own choice um, whatever you think about that is is your personal choice but we respect and we love everybody else no matter what choice they've made because they made that choice based on their own soul contract their own personal feelings and thoughts and they all believe they've done the best thing for themselves and our role is simply not to be in judgment using our mind energy but it's to love everybody from the heart so when families get together and perhaps you're seeing people you haven't seen for a long time or yeah. or people who are a bit afraid maybe they won't want to hug because they don't want that close physical contact anymore so you know you can still be in joy around people providing you stay out of judgment really remember we're here for the love it's all about having that heart space and just chatting find out how people are feeling how they've coped going through this difficult time that we've been through the world over and find out what brings them joy you know we at this time of year we are in joy we're with our families we're with our friends those that we love and we get to inspire them to be creative to be happy perhaps do some singing or perhaps you know do a creative project decorate the tree together cook together we you know it's all a time to come back to one and doing it from your heart rather than from your head really so my my thoughts really are I'm so looking forward to seeing my family we can just get together and have some fun out of judgment and in a sort of happy place of love 
Yeah, and also to learn to forgive also uh, the people, even, you know, for the judgment, for everything, and just enjoy, because I know I haven't been traveling for the past two years, and mm -hmm. I miss my family also, so hopefully next year will be, uh, next spring, hopefully will be the, the time for me to see uh, to see my mom, to see my sister, and uh, yes, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, forgiveness is something that needs to be, that will be processed actually during this time to forgive because, and not feel pressure to do something that you don't want to do because you don't have to, uh, probably that, that uh, question, that those uh, conversation will come about what, what we went through. But we have to learn just to uh, maybe tell, the, say to the person, you know what, we are here, we want to enjoy the moment, just not let, not talk about it, you know. So I think that will be, uh, that will be also a, a great idea for, for people and also to, uh, to take care of themselves, you see, to just, because we are the most um, important person. So if we take care of ourselves, if we love each uh, ourselves, we will be able to uh, share that light with our family, our friends. That's uh, that's what I think. Yeah, I think you you're right there. We all have our own ability to forgive, and forgiveness is forgiving ourselves as well as the people around us. When we're standing there and judging and not liking someone else because they have or haven't done something that we agree with, we're falling into judgment. And that really is just showing a part of us that isn't healed within ourselves. So the more light we can spread and share, we're healing others through doing that. And that comes from not being in judgment and being in that heart energy. And that's compassion, compassion for everybody and loving everybody. And I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. If people are getting triggered or upset or in a lower emotional state because they don't agree and they're falling into arguments and disagreement, it's easier just to say, you know what, this is a happy time. Let's put that aside for this day and this moment as family. And let's concentrate on the things that bring us closer together rather than those that are going to drive a wedge through or, or separate us at exactly. this time. Yeah. It's an important time for families, especially when people have been apart for so long. And like you say, you haven't travelled, we haven't been travelled, haven't been out of the country for years and years and years, probably about five, six years now. Although um, a few people have been travelling and they found it not as difficult as perhaps they thought they would. So maybe it's opening up again, hopefully. Yeah. I lost you. Can you hear me? Caroline? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know. I, I, there, the Zoom just uh, cut out and you disappeared. <laughs> I can hear you now. Okay, that's great. I had that also, I think, on Sunday. I don't know if it's the Matrix or the Internet, but, uh, yeah, it's been uh, cutting off. So. Yeah, it could well be. It doesn't want us talking. It's thrown <laughs> us out. <laughs> Yeah, we're just really talking about trying to stay happy as best you can when you're seeing family and friends that you haven't seen for a while. And being honest as well and authentic in how you're feeling, but without doing that in an emotional or argumentative way can be really helpful as well. You know, if you're feeling that you need a bit of space and you're wanting to protect you, then that's fine. It's fine to say that and it's fine to take that space. But we don't want to be doing that in a confrontational or challenging way. We want to be doing that in a way that's like, hey, you know what I think I'm just going to take today for me and I'm going to do what keeps me happy and maybe we can meet later or we can go out or do something together when you're in a state of calm because what you'll find is when you operate from your heart in a state of calm present in the present moment now you will also affect the other people around you with a state of calm because they mirror back to you your own sort of emotional state in that specific circumstance so if you're all angry and upset then they're going to 
react to that and be the same. So it's really important to be happy. Your happiness as a light, as a shining light of love can affect everyone around you. It can light up a room or equally you can pull a room down if you're unhappy. So when you're with lots of people, spreading as much joy as you can or at least staying calm and happy rather than falling into those lower vibrations like arguments and fear and negativity, that can really help you as well. Uh, remembering as well to protect your own space when you need that time. All of these things are just helpful things to remember as you go about your day if you're starting to feel uncomfortable when you're surrounded by other people that you perhaps haven't seen for a while and you perhaps want to have some slightly difficult conversations with. So yeah. it's, um yeah, the being calm is, I think, really important. Christmas and if you can raise that calm up to happiness and joy so much the better yes because also when you have you, your energy is high and you are joyful mm -hmm. people you attract uh, I mean it's contagious yes because, because I know for me if I see people are angry or you know different mood I really get the energy for me that's uh, that's for me so it's really important yeah. to really be uh, joyful because the new year is coming, the shift is coming. So we need to really uh, enjoy this moment and be grateful to have all the family around, the friends, and uh, just separate yourself from anything that you don't, that it doesn't resonate with you actually. So that's really- Yeah, I think that's right. This, this time as well, talking about things that don't resonate, we are kind of going through our own personal crucifixion and resurrection. This is what the revaluation is all about. It, it's not a revaluation necessarily of funding as we go through the future. It's a revaluation of the expression of our hearts in terms of the energy and the love that we have to give to people. So uh, as you know, we're talking about lower energies and staying out of fear and things and trying to move through into abundance and love and unity and joy and these happy emotions as we want to shift forward into a happier world then this um sort of time of crucifixion you'll you'll see from yourself if you're falling in fear you're going to have a tough time of it because those energies are going to feel really uncomfortable like painful energies as you learn to let them go and return to center and stay calm you'll find that the higher energies are great they really bounce you can vibe off other people you can enjoy your time and when you actually kind of meet other people in your families and things you'll find out that you can read their energies, but you can also lift their energies through balancing your own energy as you go forward. And when we talk about resurrecting, that's what we're talking about essentially at this holiday period. It's resurrecting the joy and the happiness and those more high vibe energies and letting go of the lower ones. This is all about holiday season because it gives us an opportunity to work on ourselves in that respect and also to share these energies and help others do the same thing. And if we're in lower energies, we're not helping them. We're just as well as ourselves. It, it's such an important time to try and find that joy within you. Think of friends, always make people happy. Sharing, cooking, eating, doing all the fun things that we used to be able to do together. So important this time of year, just to remember that. Joy is really, really important. Yes, and also... Uh, we are talking about uh, holiday season because it's the end of the, of the year. People are thinking what went wrong during the, the, the year, what I want to change for the, the new year. But basically it should, for me, I think it should be during the whole year, you know, it's a process. So you, because at the end of the year, it feels like you have the whole year on you, you know, on your shoulder, thinking about what what went wrong, what was right. Uh, what to change and yes I think it's really time to sh and also to share to talk about what went well because it's not always mm -hmm. to talk about what went wrong uh, it, there is a lot of positive things that happened during the year uh, so we need to share all that also that's uh, that's what I think yeah I think so yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great time. It always seems when we come to the end of the year, we do all our reflection, as you say, at the end of the year in January. And it's when everyone goes out. And over here, everyone 
joins the gym or they want to get fit or they want to give up smoking or they want to make a lifestyle improvement or get a new job or manage their finances better. We always seem to do that. We go through Christmas and then we seem to slump in January and that's when the revaluation happens that seems how it always is but yeah I agree with you realistically we should be doing that every second of every day saying what in this moment now can I make better you know we don't have to wait till January to make changes in our lives if we want to get on better with family and friends we can do that right now if we want to get fitter or healthier or manage our finances better we can do that right now we don't need to be sitting and waiting we just have that energy within us to actually do this re re-evaluation of ourselves and to see what we can do in the future to make life better next year as well as we go for a shift you might find out that I don't know you've suppressed your creative passions for example and you, you know you want to do something in that area or yeah, a lot of people want to get fit or they want to change their lives or have more time with their families and friends they haven't been able to see or perhaps more traveling. So when you're talking with people about the positive things, it's not just the things that went wrong in the past. It's also the things that went right and what you'd like to see more of that's right in the future and how you can do that and enjoy it with the people that you love as well. And I think that's really important, that sort of sharing and compassion and support for each other as well as your own self-reflection because we're not just human beings that exist in isolation from other people you know we connect the world over and it's so important to share this with other people to share our journeys and our emotional experiences so that really helps support each other as well I think as we go forward yes definitely because uh, we're going to be more in the community and everything and everything. That's why when you're talking about sharing, we can share also with people outside of our circle. You see, mm -hmm. uh, during this time with the homeless, some shelters, uh, have compassion for them. And uh, that will that bring joy, actually. You know, when you do something great, uh, you, yeah. can, you can feel the energy changing, you know, people happy and everything. So... This time, I believe this time is really the time to do that, to to share, to be compassionate, no judgment, and just move forward in the happy moment. That's what we are all looking yeah, for. Yeah, it's true. I'll tell you an experience. Yeah. I had an experience with this young lady the other day. I live in town here and I was walking out to my car and she was begging on the street corner and it was freezing cold. It, it's pretty cold here at the moment, it's about minus two. And um, she had no money in her little pot. So I put some money in and she looked so sad. I just thought I'm just going to give her a hug. So I gave her this big hug and then you could feel the energy change between us. It was like a magical moment of just giving this girl a big hug. I said to her, are you going to be okay? It's very cold. Have you got somewhere to go tonight? And she says, yes, I'm in a hostel. I have a roof over my head this evening. And I said, okay, great. Well, come back and I'll see you again tomorrow. And then um, she said, okay, per <laughs> left this poor girl crying. Aww. She started to cry at this point. And I thought, oh no, what have I done? Uh, but she is of happiness. And it wasn't much that I'd done for her other than given her a few bits of change and a hug, but it just spread that tiny little bit of joy. And I think we all have that capability just to remember to be inspired from our hearts and just give someone a moment of joy, even if that moment is all you can do. Because I could have walked straight past and ignored this girl, but something in me just drew me to her. And it was just a magical moment for a few seconds. Wow. And I think that sort of thing makes a difference in people's days sometimes. It made a difference to mine. And hopefully I'll see her again when she's back and we can have a catch up and a coffee. But, you know, you just never know what one moment can do to inspire someone else's life. So it's always a good thing to participate in communities and find out what you can do to help. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Even a smile or just a word that can mm. change also somebody's life. You know, maybe that person just needed to hear something and you just give him answer to, you know, what was bothering him or her. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So... Well, are you planning to uh, yeah. be with your family this season? 
I'm hoping to, yes. Um, unfortunately, my father passed away a couple of months ago, so that makes yeah. it sad in a way because he won't be part of our family group when we get together. Yeah. But we shall get together anyway and have lots of fun and just wish he was with us. That's the yeah. best way. You know, he was such a happy and joyous man. I'm sure he will be with us in spirit as much as he can be. Yeah. But yes, I'm hoping to get together with my mum and my sister and my children as well. I have two boys. Okay. So that will be great to come together and we'll cook and we'll eat together. And we normally sit in the warm and then play silly games that involve wearing silly hats or something, which is quite fun. And then if the weather's not absolutely freezing, we try and go for a walk together around the block and then come back in and probably eat far too much chocolate and watch films on TV. But it is a nice day when the whole family gets together and chats and enjoys themselves. So. I think my family are quite positive. They put aside their, their sadnesses okay. and they do tend to have a lot of fun. We like to have music on and sing along in the background and have a bit of a party atmosphere, actually. That tends to sum us up on Christmas. So, it's, yeah, it's a nice thing to do. Okay, that's so I'm looking great. forward to it. That's great. Yeah, how that's about you? Are, you? are you meeting your family? Uh, no, uh, probably like if I need to travel, actually. Uh, yeah. um, because I'm here in Africa and so I will be with uh, my husband, some friends probably, but uh, no traveling yet because there is still some restrictions, some, some places. So for yeah. now, I'm just waiting uh, uh, to, uh, for everything to be left. So then I will be able to travel, hopefully next, uh, next spring. Yeah, it's been similar to that for us here. I, we found the travel restrictions for people to be able to go and visit family have just more or less been lifted. Testing has been lifted and other things that have been in place. Okay. So my son lives and works in Monaco in the sort of bottom south of France. So he um, is able to come home for Christmas, which is very exciting. So he can book flights and he's unrestricted in terms of of traveling back to the UK so that works out really well so I'm looking forward to seeing him immensely and hopefully if we keep unrestricted I can go and visit him back in January so we're just getting to the point now where our family can finally come together again which is lovely so it's nice to be able to have that opportunity but yeah we haven't been on holiday for sort of four years or out of the country because of the restrictions put on things so I'm really hoping this will be the year that we can start to go and see family and friends abroad a bit more and travel. As yeah. much as I love the UK in summer and winter, it's not quite as warm. <laughs> So, yeah. But I think, you know, we're probably everybody out there who's listening to this is going to have been in the same situation. They're going to have been separated and isolated from loved ones, whether that's just because they haven't felt like going out and mixing with other people. So they've mainly stayed in their homes or whether that's just because physical restrictions have stopped them from doing the, the living the life and traveling that they would normally live. So. It is as people venture out and they start to see people and meet people. It's a really important time to remember that there is a world out there. There are loving people out there. You can still go out and have fun out there. And even if it's cold or it's too warm, whichever part of the world you're in, you know, there are people out there who are very loving and very happy. And, and it's a wonderful life if you let it be. And feeling that from your heart is really important. And we do that just by sort of going out and trying it, but it's it's controlling our own emotions to some extent as well. You know, we have to go through the same things when we travel. We have to physically go to the airport, get on a plane or get in a car and drive. And it's up to us in each moment whether we choose to do that with a happy attitude or a, or a sad one. We can choose that, the how we feel. You know, we have the power to go, OK, I can do this, but I'm going to do this in a happy way, no matter what adversity comes up, because I'm, you know, happy in my heart. Or else we can choose to be like, oh, no, I can't cope. It's drama. It's drama because we're not feeling it in our heart. So having a sort of centered moment or some deep breaths or sort of thinking I'm going to be calm here can really help you as you are traveling and dealing with people that you haven't seen for a while as well. And I think it's really important just to smile at people and remember all of those people who are working, all of those people who aren't fortunate enough to have homes at Christmas as well, all of those people who are struggling and suffering. You know, it really is that they get some love at Christmas as well well it, it and it all comes from your heart center so i think it's really important to remember joy in ourselves and giving joy for others at this time of year yes and i think also maybe you have some um, some technique or some advice 
because I'm sure that there is a few people who are afraid to meet, you know, with friends and family. So they they need like a reassurance to know that, okay, you can go, like you say, you need to breathe and be uh, change your attitude and be happy and say, okay, I'm going to do it uh, no matter what and just go for it. I don't know if you have some uh, technique, advice, or maybe some uh, affirmation uh, uh, phrase, because you say you wrote a book, right? Yes, yeah, several. Um, my books use the positive power of I am affirmations. So whatever you say in your world after I am defines you as you go about your day. So you can say things to yourself like I am powerful. I am a warrior. I am strong. I am able to do this. I am able to travel. I am able to get out there and have a great day. I am able to love these people. I am able to do this. And that moves you sort of out of fear into a positive mindset if you say them um anything i am should be followed by a powerful positive not i am terrible that's a bad one we don't want things like that positive affirmations or, or powerful ones that resonate through your body so before you go you can perhaps try some like i am confident if you're feeling that you need a confidence boost that's a really good one and the way to say it is to sort of stand up straight perhaps even look in a or just say it out loud to the world say i am confident i am happy i am strong i am brave i am enjoying this life i am united i am looking forward to this day i am compassionate all of those sorts of things can really help you feel stronger in your core as you go out and about um if all else fails a few deep breaths before you speak are always quite useful if you're feeling like you're struggling or you're meeting someone who's winding you up a little bit or you're feeling that you might have an argument, the best thing to do is just not say anything and just literally take a few deep breaths and then think, how do I want this moment to go? Do I, I don't want to react out of anger without thinking. I want to keep it calm. So perhaps I'll take those three deep breaths and go, well, it was nice talking to you. I'm going to go outside now or great to speak to you. I'm leaving now. You know, just because someone else is trying to argue with you doesn't mean you need to argue back to them. You have a choice at that moment. And the best way to do it is to sort of take a few deep breaths and just separate yourself a little step back from that situation if it happens to you and think, you know, what's the most peaceful reaction for me in this moment rather than rising to it? And then before you know it, you're stuck in a negative situation because that's not fun for any of us. So yeah. I would definitely recommend those two tips. I mean, that comes with staying in joy, really. If you can stay neutral or at least in a joyous state, then you're going to have less adversity as you're traveling and less arguments with family. And that should make your day better as you go through every day, not just at Christmas, but it, it you know, it's good techniques to use as you go about every day, really, so that you can yeah. really stay grounded. Um, if all else fails for me, I always go out and stand in the garden for five minutes on my own just to get literally away from people and get some peace. I think sometimes you can have all these energies and quite often this time of year they can be in one room or you can all be in the car together and you haven't got much room and you're driving along. And you can get wound up in those situations quite easily. So just again, taking some time to stop, just get out there, enjoy a few minutes in silence in nature, just to feel calm and grounded, centered, relaxed. And if you're lucky enough to have sun, perhaps do some sun gazing, get some warm energy on your skin and just feel glad to be alive, feel blissed in that moment that you have, because each moment is a present. It's a now moment. It's a, it's a gift. So that is the greatest gift you can have. So in that moment, give it the gift of love. That would be my advice. Just, you know, try and feel loving at this time of year and spread that to everybody else. Yes, because I know for myself, when I'm overwhelmed, I just go mm -hmm. outside and breathe, take a breath and just, you yeah. know, try to let it go. And uh, because sometimes when I receive the just the wind, it, it's like it's it's uh, wiping out everything in my mind and just refresh. But um, I'm really uh I'm looking forward uh, to talk about uh, sun gazing. I know I've been reading it and 
So we will be able, uh, you will be able to share actually uh, what is what it is exactly because I've been seeing on uh, you know the channel of um, higher awakening uh, to yes. freedom school, but there is so many messages that I don't have <laughs> really time to uh, to go through it. So yeah, that will be nice to uh, to have the information even for the for the audience that uh, is listening to us. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if uh, there is anything else that you want to add for this uh, holiday season, just to be happy, joyful, no judgment, compassionate, uh, take care of yourself, <laughs> don't take anything that is not resonating with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of practical things, actually, when you're talking about self-care. Uh, we all know, uh, we've been talking about sort of guarding your thoughts, really with self-care and trying to stay heart-centered in a happy place so that you don't drop your vibration too much but there are practical things that you can do as well I talked about eating too much chocolate that's one of my bad things this time of year <laughs> but healthy eating I know it's difficult when everyone's giving you wine and chocolates to stay off the alcohol and the, the bad food but as we go through these higher energies our bodies do need to assimilate more light and, and that's where the sun gazing comes in which we can talk about in a bit or in another the show perhaps that's um, obviously up to you yeah. but um it's really important to eat healthy food so get in the fruit and vegetables if you can as well especially the more fruit the more veg and anything healthy any food that comes directly from sunlight that's whole food that's unprocessed has got the tonic sunlight energy within it because that's how it grew in the sunlight like a nice I don't know ripe tomato or a pineapple or some fruit and that really is the kind of energy that we need I know a lot of people eat meat this time of year because especially over here, everyone wants chicken or turkey and these poor animals, but but they are um, a lower vibrational food in essence. So it's better to try and stay away from at least as much unhealthy food as you can. And yeah, chocolate, I probably won't be able to avoid it completely, but I will do my best to try and eat healthily at the same time. And certainly getting in things like vitamin C, if you're in a country like mine, where there's not much sunlight, if any at all at the moment. <laughs> so trying to just, again, get the healthy food in is always good. And again, with alcohol, it's very easy to have a few glasses of wine and that can lower your vibration down as well. And it, it's not necessarily that healthy. But if your vibration's low and you're feeling tired, you can get a bit touchy and that can cause arguments. So I would definitely recommend maybe then have a gap and have a bit of water to keep yourself hydrated or not drinking at all is a better option if it, if you if you don't want to do that so again it's just this time of year because consuming too much and too much negative things can lower your energies and that doesn't help when you're trying to feel that you're wanting to be buoyant and energized and free when you're really feeling like oh because you've overdone it and that's easily done this time of year so a bit of practical advice there would be try and get some healthy sort of food and some water in if you can okay do you recommend uh, vitamin d because i know for the uh, at this time for some country who do, who's in the winter time uh, does the vitamin D can mm -hmm. help also? It can. I think there is vitamin D and you can mix it. This is from memory, so don't quote me on it, but with vitamin K as well. And I think it's a K2. And I think that combination can really help if you don't get enough sunlight. And you can get it in a dropper form as well as in an actual tablet. And that oh. can help you quite a lot as well, which is I have some in the kitchen. Actually, it's quite useful this time of year. But for me, I'm always consuming satsumas en masse. We can get a lot of satsumas imported. So I think juicy oranges and things like that really healthy as well um but yeah anything you can take that is going to give you a little boost to make you feel better is always a good thing okay okay that will be great well thank you caroline for this chat it was really interesting and i can't wait to have oh, more welcome. of this <laughs> and <laughs> yes <laughs> And uh, so for the audience, if you did like the this conversation, don't hesitate to click like or subscribe to not miss actually uh, the next uh, video. Thank you, Caroline. And I say, see you soon. Talk to you soon. Yes, I'll see you soon. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.